Hi everyone, happy new year to all of you. Today I'll discuss about a very important topic in prosthodontics that is lateral throat form. It is important in your final year videos as well as other examinations too. So without wasting time, let's start. You can clearly see from the picture the location of lateral throat form. It is located in the below and behind the retromolar pad. Or you can say it is situated at the distal end of the alveolo-lingual sulcus. Its synonyms are distolingual vestibule or retromyelohyoid fossa. So why this is important? Because it's a critical area which has to be recorded properly for obtaining proper retention and stability in complete denture, especially in geriatric patients with resorbed ridges. So this limiting area, actually the lateral throat form, the location, that is the limit point of lingual sulcus or the distal most part of the alveolingual sulcus and this area if you are not able to record it in your complete denture I mean if the lingual flange is not extended properly in that area then your complete denture will face a problem for retention and stability so this area is important for the retention and stability in complete denture you have to make the flange width and the length exactly maintaining the lateral throat form. So this is important for retention and stability of complete denture. I have made a note of a uh, brief note of lateral throat form in the next slides. You can write down for your final prop videos. It is an area located below and behind the retromolar region. And the boundary anteriorly by myelohyoid muscles, laterally by retromolar pad. Try to visualize the picture. Try to visualize the picture. It is located in the distal part, distal end of the alveolingual sulcus, below and behind the retromolar pad. And what are the structures in the boundary? You can easily remember if you remember the diagram, the photo. So anteriorly by myelohyoid muscles, laterally by retromolar pad, posterior laterally by superior constrictor muscles, posterior medially by the paratoglossus muscles and medially by tongue. So it's the boundary. Now we can see the area, different landmarks in a completely edentulous arch, mandibular arch. The location of retromolar pad lingual vestibule, retromyelohyoid fossa that is the your lateral throat form, anterior to it there is myelohyoid ridge and anterior to myelohyoid ridge that is pre-myelohyoid fossa. Why? Why this diagram is important? Because when you are making a complete denture, lingual uh, mandibular denture, mandibular complete denture, the length of the lingual flange is different in different area and usually the shape of the mandibular denture are shallow in pre-myelohyoid region. In the pre-myelohyoid fossa or pre-myelohyoid region, the denture are shallow, depth is less and turn towards the tongue in myelohyoid region and deep in the retromyelohyoid region. So the length gradually increase from the pre-myelohyoid fossa to the retromyelohyoid fossa. 
this area this retromyeloid region or, or lateral throat form this area provides larger vertical height for the denture which in turn increase the retention and horizontal support of the lower denture the extension of the denture into the area can resist horizontal forces that is your support increases border seal prevents tongue from returning to denture's polished surface act as a displacing lever on the denture border and contribute to the neuromuscular control mechanism beside this glandular triangle that is the lower part of retromyeloid space is a soft structure so if the margin of the lingual flange is continued posteriorly to the lateral throat form area the flange is snugly fitted providing appreciable seal so it is a function it is the importance of the lateral throat form you can write down this slide you can add in your note now the classification of lateral throat form nail classified that three types of lateral throat form is there one is deep the length you have to make the flange little deep in the lateral throat form area that means the depth of the sulcus depth of the lateral uh, throat form is more or deep that is class 1 class 2 that is moderate and class 3 it is shallow you have to make the flange the length will be less you can clearly see from the picture that this complete denture the flange have to be made you have to make the flange according to the lateral throat form you can see the class 1 the flange is the deep depth is more 2 the flange length is moderate and 3 the length of the flange is less so class 1 is a deep class 2 moderate class 3 shallow so you have to diagnose the depth of the lateral throat form how how you have to diagnose you have to diagnose manually by palpating with your finger and uh, this is this diagnosis it will vary from one observer to another observer for that there are several attempt to made the measure the lateral throat form one that is the classical uh, technique for the measurement of the lateral throat form that is you have to place the index finger in the retromolar region and the patient is asked to protrude the tongue 1/4 inch beyond the lower lip if appreciable displacing force is felt in the finger it is class 1 if the force felt is negligible it is considered as class 3 and the force felt in between that is class 2 so you have to make the flange according to the depth of the lateral throat form but this measuring formula will vary from one observer to another for that the recent a uh, study shows that this technique customized gaze for measuring lateral throat form this technique is uh, giving the standard diagnosis standard length for the uh, measuring the lateral throat form it is a simple instrument it has a flexible wire horizontal arm vertical arm you have to just place it inside the retromolar fossa area and you have to measure by scale so that's all for lateral throat form we'll meet in the next video thank you very much